Thank you for joining me for this episode. Today, we're joined by Dr. Sherilyn Chapman, and we're going to be speaking about the American Academy of Orthokeratology and Myopia Control on the Myopia Podcast. Welcome to the Myopia Podcast, where we give you the latest myopia research, clinical topics, and industry insights. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all awesome myopia content. And now to our host, a massive myopia manager himself, Dr. David Kading. Thank you for joining us for this episode. Today, we're joined by Dr. Sean Chaplin. She is a fantastic practitioner and an incredible advocate for myopia. I'm so stoked that you are here hanging out with me on the Myopia Podcast. Thank you for having me. <laughs> we we really were just going to chit chat for another 15 minutes, but we decided, hey, I'm going to ask her some questions that I think all of y'all want to know. So we might as well record it and share it. And so here's that question is this year, you have just come into the presidency of the uh, of the International well of the American Academy of Orth Orthokeratology and Myopia Control. It's always a mouthful. It's a mouthful. <laughs> Congratulations! Thank you. Uh, like, are you going? I knew you didn't have any time to sleep before, but now, how is this this added weight adding to it? Um, you know, it's it's fun um, because it's such a buildup, right? It's such a buildup to the academy meeting and you kind of think, okay, when it's all over, then I'll have a little bit of a breather, but the, but you really don't because first of all, as always, VBD always gets me super fired up. So here I am, I'm very, very excited um, because I've just talked to a lot of people that I haven't seen for years. Some people I haven't ever met in real life before and, and I've met them so many times virtually. Um, so now finally I've met them in person for the first time and I'm just like super stoked. And so then we're like, all right, well, how do we make next year even better? And so we're doing, you know, a lot of um, like post-conference meetings, wrap up meetings to say, okay, how did this go? How did that go? What can we improve upon? And, um, you know, I've got a lot of ideas about how we can move forward because really everything needs to be leveled up, right? If we want the American Academy of Orthokeratology and Myopia Control um, to remain a big player in this space, we really have to um, learn how to um, scale ourselves. And in order to do that, we need to put in new protocols, new processes. Um, so that's just a lot of work. The planning starts now. Um, mm -hmm. We our, our education committees will be meeting even before Christmas to start planning next VBD. Um, yep. So yeah, there's a lot going on. So at the time of this recording, it's been a, a month or so since the Vision by Design meeting, which took case, it place in Bellevue, Washington, my my hometown. And next week, next year's meeting is going to be held. It is so exciting. It's going to be in Chicago. And in Chicago. Um, I think that's really great because it's a very, very easy city to travel to. It's not such a big time zone difference for a lot of folks. And um, it's going to be the 6th through the 10th of September, I believe. So it's right That's after right. Labor Day. So you have uh, have taken on this presidency. So now the uh, the Academy is much more than just a meeting. There is uh, a lot of other things that are involved. Why don't you walk us through a little bit about all the things that the Academy is involved in? ways that people can get involved and educated and, and so forth for people who, you know, maybe have just started myopia management and they want to want to go to the next level. Um, I'm glad you asked. That's a really good question because a lot of people really aren't familiar with what the AAOMC uh, is all about and what it does. And so let's just first start off by talking about what our mission is. So our mission is to provide unbiased education um, to people who want to get really good at myopia management and also orthokeratology. Um, our meeting is designed specifically for people, the first, I should say the first half of our meeting is designed specifically for doctors who just want to get started. And we call that our boot camp or our boot camp for newcomers. And it's a very non-intimidating environment. And it's designed to kind of walk people through step by step, kind of all the different aspects. Um, the, what you might call the boring stuff like informed consent and, um, you know, kind of talking about costs and setting up your business plan and then more exciting things like how to learn to really dive into topography and read topography really well because 
you know, when we're in school, we just don't get a whole lot of training on, on reading topographies. And then like kind of the basics of what is atropine? How does it work? What is, you know, what is the design basis of the soft multifocals? Um, and what is orthokeratology? And, you know, we kind of break it down into steps and troubleshooting and, um, you know, care and insertion removal. Like, how do you make sure that you're minimizing risk of infection? You know, how do you talk to parents? We have some practice management. Um, so that's really, really good. Now, beyond that, we have the, the general session, which is more advanced, um, and that always brings in the most cutting edge stuff. Um, you know, very exciting. We're talking about like how red light can affect myopia um, progression and, and, and slowing progression of myopia, higher order aberrations, coma aberrations, um, things like that. So you get some of that really, really high level cutting edge stuff. That's super exciting. Um, but beyond that, one of the things that you really get from being a part of a group like the AAOMC is we have this online Google group, which um, for me personally, that was what really helped me get a lot more comfortable um, in my own practice with what I was doing with myopia management, um, because the Google group is this online forum where tons of doctors are involved, posting questions, posting answers to those questions, great discussions like, should we use a plunger to take the ortho K mold out or should we not use a plunger? And it's like great to watch these conversations go on because there's really great reasons to use the plunger and really great reasons not to use the plunger. And then you just, you kind of decide what works best for you and what, um, you know, what side of the fence you want to sit on there. Um, you know, solutions, everyone's always asking about like, what are we going to do? Like we can't, some of our hydrogen peroxide solutions are no longer being, you know, manufactured. Like, what are you all doing? Um, and so just like to be able to have this huge group of people to lean on for design problems, solutions, questions, all of that, like for me, the first several years, I just really was quite silent on the group. And I just listened, I watched, I read these posts and comments. I learned mm -hmm. a lot. Um, and I would say now I'm a little bit more of an active poster, um, but it's just, gosh, such a non-intimidating, um, environment to really learn. Agree. Agree. You know, I've been doing my OP management for 15, for 15 years and I had not been to boot camp. So I decided along with um, the other doctors in my practice that we would do the whole shebang and we did boot camp. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, stuff that I've been doing forever, but it's always good to hear another person's perspective and, you know, other other ideas that come along. So I think it's a, a really good uh, a good thing if you've done myopia management forever and ever, you wouldn't expect boot camp to like teach you a ton, but it's good to revisit and kind of relook at all those sort of things. So what do you first, feel? This was your first boot camp. First boot camp. I've been coming okay. to Vision by Design uh, every year. I think that it's that it's gone on in the last however many years, but. I, I might have missed a, a year or two, but I this is the first time I, I went to boot camp, and uh, maybe that's because it was in Seattle, and so it built, <laughs> so it was it was close. So, um, so what did you take away um, as the best thing that for you out of the vision by design? And then I also want to know what you thought was missing. And that you're going to make sure as part of next year's vision by design. Ooh, that, that's kind of a loaded question. Um, okay. Um, it's so hard to decide. It's so hard to decide. One of my favorite tips that I learned at vision by design, I believe it was Dr. Carrie Alfieri said during her speech and it was, the, it was this was at boot camp. So here I am. I'm, uh, I'm already in the middle of myopia management in my own practice as a subspecialty. And my favorite thing came out of boot camp. Um, well, no, maybe I have two favorites. Can I have two favorites? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. So she said, she was talking about visual hygiene and she was talking about um, the way that she tells her kids to have the proper working distance. And so what she does is she points to her shoulder and she says, what is this? And the answer is, of course, shoulder. And then she points to her elbow and she says, what is this? And of course, the answer is elbow. And then she like kind of like holds up her arm in a V shape and says, what letter does this make? V. And then she holds her um, arm at more of like a 90 degree angle. Uh, and she said, what letter does this make? And you say L. And then she says to the, the patient or the child, do you have V bows or do you have elbows? 
And it's just so funny because, and I've, I've actually used that line on some patients now and they laugh, they think it's really hilarious, but the point is they remember it, right? And so it's a really good way for them to remember to have that um, 90 degree bend in their elbow when they're reading to keep that nice long working distance rather than having their phones way up close to their faces or their tablets or whatever. Um, so that was one of my favorite things. Um, one of my other favorite things was um, when, I think it was how May was talking about um, positive coma aberrations um, or was it? Yeah, it was him. It was him. And um, I'm so excited. Uh, I've actually, um, taken a patient, a progressive patient who is on atropine and she's on ortho K dual therapy and she is progressing and she's got beautifully centered molds. Um, and, uh, I'm doing a monocular trial. I'm purposely decentering one of her molds to create some, uh, coma aberration, some positive coma aberration in just one eye. And we'll see if we can get that axial link to slow down a little bit in that eye. Uh, so, uh, keep post, stay posted for that. Um, if I'm, if I have anything interesting to report, I might do a little case presentation on it next year. Yeah. Um, we're not in the business of making pretty pictures, right? No, I know. Randy says that and it's great. Um, but so, so then to answer the final part of your question, what, um, what's missing? I mean, things can always be improved upon. Uh, I am really hoping to have some offsite entertainment. Um, networking events next year. I'm working on that. Um, I'm hoping to um, kind of get a little bit more with regards to uh, some hands-on stuff. I think people really want that. So we're talking about ways that we can maybe try and incorporate some wet labs or workshops. Um, you know, and, and there's just, gosh, there's, there's so many ideas that we have and we're always like, My, man, there's just not enough time, right? Um, so we just kind of have to look at the agenda and the scheduling and see um, what we can do. Another thing that I'm really excited about is we're going to be um, expanding the speaker pool a little bit um, where people can, we'll have a, like an open submission platform where people can submit outlines if they're interested in speaking um, for Vision by Design. And so I'm just really interested to see what kind of stuff comes from that. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll, um, yeah. We'll just keep brainstorming all year and bring you the best program that we can and grow upon it, you know, make it better every year. Mm -hmm. So I will tell you an obvious gap that I noticed in the education, not as a, uh, as a crit critique, but as a, I think it needs to make sure its way is in there is we didn't talk about spectacles hardly at all. Right. And they're a big thing, right? Internationally, they're way big, uh, but we, have, we don't have them yet. But uh, but maybe between now and next year, we will. And uh, even before it's available. So all things myopia control, that's really an interesting one. I think that's a maybe a bigger practice management question than maybe a clinical implementation, right? Because there's a lot with the spectacle lenses of how are we going to do it? How are we going to bring it in? We've been fitting things in people's eyes and shoving drops in eyes. And mm -hmm. now we're putting things on the face. And um, you know, that's so different for all of us, right? And so that's a that's a real interesting one that I'm I'm anxious to hear other people's perspectives and learn about how other people have been doing it for a long time, right? In Canada, and they just got some new lenses in Australia. So really, some fun stuff, right? Yes, I think that's a really good point, and I've actually been thinking about that a lot. Um, and so my idea um, or thought on that is that if something like that um, comes along, and we're like, oh man we just can't wait till vision by design because everyone's dying for this right um we have a, actually um, some of our board of directors are really um, kind of dialing down on um, creating some really good webinars over the next yes. 12 months and um that sounds like a perfect webinar topic if if need be right so yeah absolutely well it's uh fantastic okay so sometimes i see people who have uh f i a O M C behind their name and others have F A A O M C behind their name. Can I have both? Okay. So that's a good question too. It's very confusing because there's just, it's alphabet soup, right? So when the American Academy of Orthokeratology and Myopia Control was first developed, it was just the American Academy of Orthokeratology. That's right. Um, and so the myopia control, the MC part was added later. And right. so some of the fellows um, got their fellowship very, very early. 
And that was the letter designation that they were given at the time. And they kept it. And um, some got their fellowships later. And so they have the FIAOMC on the back of theirs. Uh, and the, and the, um, you know, the international organization was developed after the American yeah. Academy. So the American Academy came first and then we developed an international and now the American Academy is just like a, a subset of that international. There's, I believe, seven sections um, mm -hmm. internationally. So there's that. And now we have a new designation as well. It's the IACMM. And what that stands for is the, um, um, let's see, <laughs> International uh, International Academy Certified Myopia Manager. Yep. And so and it's very, that's a very team, right? What's that? Yep. Those are, those are people in our team who are involved in myopia management, right? Yes. So, um, no, that one is CMN, Certified Myopia Navigator. So that's not an international one. That one mm -hmm. is just in the United States right now. Um, and it, uh -huh. we don't know yet if the international um, chapters are all going to take, um, that, take that one on. Yeah. But so the IACMM, what that is, it's um, not so heavy in ortho K. So the FIA okay. OMC fellows are very, very heavy in ortho K and their testing was based on ortho K and okay. very complex cases and lens design and things like that. But they were never, a lot of them were never even tested on myopia management um, as mm. we know today, because a lot of those things didn't exist yet. The soft multifocals weren't a thing. The atropine wasn't a thing. Right. Um, all this stuff with axial length, it wasn't a thing. And so the IACMM is really more um, for people who are doing a lot of myopia management or have studied to get to know a lot of the myopia management techniques pretty in depth but maybe they aren't a seasoned ortho k fitter yeah and and maybe they're not well suited to take the fellowship for ortho k yet at this point in time um and so it's kind but of with regards to myopia control that they have a a, a a a basis to be able to want to be uh challenged and and, and there's and frankly spread. there's a lot of doctors who know a ton of myopia control but maybe don't know a lot about lens design yeah. And so this is a way for them to kind of validate and certify themselves and let, let the public know um, and let other peers know that could be referral sources for them that they do in fact have a really strong um, understanding of this subject matter. Yeah, I love it. I love it. More to learn. Where can we go to learn more about the Academy? Um, you can go to the AAOMC's website. I think it's aaomc.org. We're actually um, doing a complete website restructuring and design. Yeah. That, that was one of our post VBD um, tasks that we're working on now. So, um, you know, there's just a lot of, a lot of things we want to improve and make better. Um, so yeah, check us out online yeah. and uh, become a member, get on the Google group, get involved. Pretty expensive to become a member, right? No, it's like $3.99. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like that at all. No, no. It for isn't. what you get, it isn't. And you can even become a baseline member and not have to pay anything, as I recall. But then, if you become more involved, you can do more, right? So, yeah. very awesome. Cool. All right. Well, thank you, Cheryl Chapman, for telling us more about the academy and uh, Envision by Design. We're gonna uh, look for more information as time goes on. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And thank you for joining us for this episode of the Myopia Podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you again next time. One, two, three, thank you for tuning in to the Myopia Podcast. If you enjoy our content, please leave a five-star review, and don't forget to subscribe for more great episodes.